Hey there, I'm Whitney and welcome to my channel. And before we get started, please subscribe to my channel below by clicking the subscribe button. Today I'll be introducing a new series on my channel called Curly Knowledge. And basically the series will go into anything and everything natural hair. The reason why I'm doing this series is because I find on YouTube that a lot of the time, you know, YouTubers will create these concoctions and create things for us to watch and mimic, but don't necessarily say why they're using these ingredients. I'd like to know. I'm a biologist. Made. I want to know why you're putting these products together and what the products do in order to help my hair better and make it, you know, grow and flourish. So we'll be talking about things like natural hair typing, uh, different types of clays that we use, the oils and the difference between them, and today's subject is proteins. I'll be talking about DIY protein treatments versus store-bought protein treatments, how to know you are protein sensitive, proteins regarding to natural hair. Later on in the series, I'll do something that goes into more depth about each one of these subjects. Proteins. So proteins are a macromolecule. Macro means large, so that means large molecule. Proteins are made up of monomers, which are are amino acids for proteins. So amino acids connected together by peptide bonds, thousands of these types of bonds create a protein, a whole protein. So how does this refer to natural hair? Our hair is mostly comprised of proteins, and our protein specifically is keratin. Typically, we see two different types of protein treatments regarding natural hair, which would be the DIY ones that you see on YouTube, and then the store-bought ones. So DIY protein treatments, those can be made with egg, mayo, which typically contains egg whites, avocado, and banana. The issue with these types of protein treatments is that they have whole protein in them and this isn't really all that beneficial to our hair like we have been led to believe through YouTube. So I, being one of those people, have thought for years that these type of protein treatments are so healthy for your hair and able to penetrate into your hair, but in reality, those whole proteins are too large to penetrate into your hair shaft. Really, it's more like they're kind of just sitting on top of your hair. Store-bought proteins, on the other hand, are full of hydrolyzed proteins. So we're going to take a second to go back to when we were talking about the structure of a protein. So I said amino acids bonded by peptide bonds create a whole protein. Now with hydrolyzed protein, it is protein that is split into fragments by hydrolysis. I decided to use a diagram to better explain this. On the top, we have a undamaged hair shaft, okay? It's perfect, no cuticles, no damage, no anything. Now on the second row, you see the damaged cuticle after wearing and tearing through daily life. What a protein treatment does is allow hydrolyzed protein to insert its way into the hair shaft, create a temporary bond or a temporary fix that will protect the actual hair shaft within. The gray is the original cuticle and those colorful pieces are the hydrolyzed protein inserting its way into your hair. On the third row, we have damage due to bleaching and it causes the cuticles to space out a little bit more and also the hair shaft to discolor. What the hydrolyzed protein does there is temporarily go in between those spaced out cuticles and fill in those damaged patches. This is why these types of protein treatments, the store-bought, are so incredibly beneficial. Because as you know, we do a lot to our hair. We do manipulation through braiding and washing and adding different products like heat and just everything. There's just so much that we do our hair which creates wear and tear in it. And these proteins, these hydrolyzed proteins to be exact, are able to go in there and repair the damaged areas and create a bond that makes your hair shaft stronger and protects it. Now, everything has to be done with moderation. It is best to follow these um, store-bought protein treatments by the directions that they give you. So if they say from every six to eight weeks, then you should do every six to eight weeks like it says, because you can have a protein overload just like you have a sugar rush, for example. So how do you know if you are protein sensitive. The way you can tell if you're protein sensitive is using products that contain protein. So say you have a product that is very protein potent and you put it on your hair and afterwards your hair feels brittle and dry and even after you condition it, it's not feeling all that great. That probably means and indicates that you are protein sensitive. Now the dry and brittle and straw-like feeling is more focused on the hair shaft and the effects of protein. Now if we're looking at our scalp, which protein can sometimes have more of an effect on, you can find red spots, itchiness, dryness, and if all that happens after you use a protein-based product, then more than likely you are protein sensitive, even after you condition, okay? 
You should just be careful about how much protein you're putting into your hair. A way to figure out how much protein a product has is looking at that ingredient. And if it's closer to the top, one of the first five items, there's a lot of protein in there. But if it's like at the bottom, then there's probably not a lot. And a way to point out if there is a lot of protein is to look for that word hydrolyzed. And if you want to figure out if you are protein sensitive, then just test a patch of your hair rather than doing your whole entire head and see how it works for your hair. Now I hope that this was as beneficial as possible for you. Again, I will be going into depth on each subject individually, but I wanted to do a protein based video before I went into that because protein is heavily involved in here obviously thank you guys so much for watching if you'd like to fact check you can check the description box and i'll have plenty of information for you a lot of the stuff i've learned through being a biology major but some of it i had to learn myself and it was fun teaching also don't forget to enter into the giveaway check out my last video which was how i did feed in cornrows it was super cute and fun to film so have a good day and be blessed and value your worth